It is a great honor to be here, uh, and I will tell you that a uh, little insight. Um, I am a thousand percent of my energies are focused on Blockbuster in these challenging times. We're in a transformation, trying to turn around the company. I'm not doing speaking engagements, and yet when, and as you can imagine, I receive a number of invitations. When we received this one, uh, the deciding factor was the Drum Major Institute, uh, and it it was uh, an organization that uh, we thought we should come and be a part of. Uh, because it's of its goal of being progressive and practical and effective. And I said, I'm progressive, I'm practical, I'm effective, I need to go talk to these people, <laughs> right? And so I said, sure, let's do this. And uh, then about a month later, uh, after accepting the invitation, uh, I, I received the topic, executive compensation. I see, did we know this beforehand? <laughs> because what is there that's practical, progressive, and effective about executive compensation? I'm not sure I have much to say about this topic. Um, my, my team uh, assured me uh, that uh, as an investor, uh, as shareholder, a, uh, a member of the executive team uh, and chairman of Blockbuster, I, uh, I did have a lot to say about this topic. Uh, it is a bit unusual, uh, and I come to this opportunity from a bit of an unusual path, and perhaps that's why. But it gives us a unique opportunity to take a leadership role here uh, in, a, in an important area of corporate governance. Um, we want, we are committed at Blockbuster to transform the company and recognize that we have to transform it in the eyes of the customer, for those of you who have paid late fees and all these other things over the years, we've got some work to do uh, to reestablish credibility and trust in your eyes as customers. But at the same time, we have to transform the company in the eyes of the uh, shareholder and the investor. And we have to build credibility and we have to build trust. Well, transparency uh, and opportunities to become closer to the shareholder with opportunities like, say, on pay are yet another step in building credibility and trust in the investment community. Well, th to begin, before sp uh, talking more specifically about say on pay, uh, I was asked to give you a little bit of background on myself and, and why this was such an easy uh, decision for me as chairman of Blockbuster to support. Um, a little bit, I have to take you back in history uh, because we are all uh, products of our personal experience. Uh, I came from uh, a previous opportunity after 21 years at 7-Eleven and having the privilege of leading uh, the 7-Eleven uh, corporation for many, many years uh, prior to coming to Blockbuster. I had the uh, experience in that organization of coming up from within the company. And when people come from within the company, of course, I was always getting caught up. I was always paid a bit less than the people that would come in from the outside who were recruited from the outside. Uh, and so I always felt like I was, you know, a bit of a second-class uh, person within because I was uh, someone that was new to the company, perhaps in the same role, uh, was making more than I was because they had been recruited. And so I, I understood that coming through the ranks of the organization and perhaps was more sensitive as leader of the organization to these kinds of balance issues in the marketplace. I also had a unique experience at 7-Eleven because our largest licensee in Japan became a majority shareholder at one point in the company. And so I had a lot of interaction with my Japanese counterparts and uh, was able to, as we are with global companies, learn best practices worldwide. And I was fascinated with some of the things that worked so well uh, in Japan. And one of the things that they had adopted was a principle for compensation that said that the senior officer of the company should make no more than about 20 to 25 times multiple what the lowest level management person in that corporation was. And it was sort of a balancing act. There were no rules. It was sort of a, an unofficial metric, rule of thumb, if you will. And uh, what I discovered was in the organization, particularly a retail organization, we're dealing with store managers, you're dealing with franchisees, that more practical base salary was actually very helpful to me in being able to communicate with franchisees because if they were going to read in the press that I was making you know, several million dollars per year and they were struggling at $50,000 a year in their store, it was pretty hard to relate. Uh, so having a more practical base salary and a much more incentive-based, uh, equity-based compensation actually helped me a lot internally. Um, so I learned a lot in that experience at 7-Eleven. After 21 years, we did sell the company to that largest shareholder. 
uh, our Japanese uh, partners. And I found myself in a situation where um, all of a sudden I could take a little time off, uh, having worked every minute of my life that I could recall. I had a bit of time to uh, actually relax and enjoy uh, life for about a year and then was foolish enough, as my wife would characterize it, to uh, want to get back in the game because I loved what I did. And I uh, looked across the landscape. I realized I love retail. Uh, I love the idea of transforming a company. And as I looked at the opportunities, I saw Blockbuster was a terrific opportunity uh, because it was a chance for me to uh, take another retail concept and help to transform it in both the eyes of the customer and the eyes of the shareholder. So I looked at this opportunity uh, as a chance to come in and create change, and create change not just as an employee. Uh, perhaps I had the privilege of uh, having uh, had a good career previously and had more financial flexibility than most, but I came into this opportunity looking at it as a chance to create value. And I knew that if I created value for the corporation, then value would in turn accrue to, to me personally. So I could come at it more as an employee. As a result, I approached the board, I approached the uh, company, uh, and suggested a compensation package that was a bit unusual. Um, I, I could have worked perhaps for a dollar a year salary, uh, chose not to do that, uh, chose a normal, uh, somewhat normal salary, but took uh, a salary base that is in the 25th percentile, I was actually a bit below, I believe, when, when I started in the 25th percentile, it's probably lower now, uh, because it was a three-year base salary comp, uh, uh, structure, and agreed that my, all of my uh, incentive would be based on equity equity appreciation opportunity in the form of stock options. So my bonus, 100% of my bonus, any incentive that I get is all based on equity. I get virtually uh, uh, no perks, if you will. There are no country clubs. There are no you know, uh, other fringe benefits. Didn't need any of that stuff. Just let's keep this clean. Let's keep this very simple and straightforward. Now, why did I want to do this? I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. One. It was easier, again, with the employees. I'm dealing with store managers, 5,000 stores. They make, on average, $45,000, $50,000 a year. It's easier to relate to them if they're not reading in the paper about a big, extravagant uh, salary and perks and all this other stuff. Uh, but I also knew I had a challenge with the shareholder. I had to rebuild trust and confidence in the investment community. For me to come out as an investor was an easier job. So not only did I take this compensation package, but Imagine this conversation when I go home to my wife and say, now, I've decided to get back to work. And she knows work doesn't mean 40 hours. It means 90 a week for me. Uh, because when I take a challenge, I throw myself completely into it. But then I had to explain to her that I was taking our nest egg and putting it back at risk because I invested in this company as well. I didn't just come as an employee. I said, I want to come in as an investor. I'm going to look at this as if it was a private equity opportunity. That was another, you know, I was balancing, do I go back into a public company or do I go to a private company? Well, what's the difference? There shouldn't be any difference but for the balance sheet, so why don't I look at this as if I would a private entity and I'm going to take my personal investment and reinvest it in the company. And this will give me such an advantage when talking with shareholders because I'm one of you now. That was the concept. A bit unusual. Um, again, I had the privilege of coming from a previous career where I, perhaps I could afford to do this, but I'm also a bit of a, of a student of good governance practices and believe that this would be an interesting experiment, if you will, in my ability to communicate more effectively with the investor base. 